Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we are doing our Carlisle, Spring Carlisle, Spring, I used quotations, our uh, Spring Carlisle Bounty uh, video. So, um, to be honest, my bounty is a little smaller than it actually was because uh, I actually bought some stuff that I ended up reselling right at the swap meet, so I didn't bring everything home, which is always a pretty nice thing to do if you can do that. So. Um, what we have here is kind of stuff I brought home. Some of this stuff is keepers, some of this stuff I'm going to be selling. And I figured I'd kind of go over this stuff and I, you know, as always, I mention to you guys why I buy some of this stuff, the rationale behind it, and uh, maybe it could help you guys if you're at the next swap meet or picking, you may see something that's similar and uh, it may help you guys out get something you can uh, turn into some cash. So let me pick the camera up, I'm going to walk you guys around like we always do and show you some of the neat stuff I got. All right, so we're gonna start here on the right and work our way across. So um, actually there's two things here, two sets of old slicks. So this set here is a set of old M&H uh, tires, Tire Co. for uh, when they were in Watertown, Mass. And this is a set of Race Master Super Stocks. So um, I've been buying a lot of these uh, vintage slicks because they are just kind of neat. And they are really cool for wall hangers. I have a set up in my rafters that came off the Schroll Coupe. And I've kind of realized that people have been um, buying these to collect. So I've been buying some of them and keeping some and reselling some. Um, this set here are, uh, I don't even know, I don't think they're actually even marked or re recaps, but they are so killer. Not only are they white wall, but they have the pie crust is white, painted white or not painted white, but made white as well. Uh, sadly, they're 14 inch or I would have definitely kept them because they're actually in really good shape that I feel like you probably could actually use them. Um, but uh, so these, uh, both these sets I got for pretty inexpensive um, and I'm gonna be turning them over. Uh, my buddy Nick Choppit actually came by and uh, saw these in the swap meet booth and he had to have them. So I gave him the friend price. He got these for a good deal. I probably only made like I don't know, 50 or 60 bucks on them, but I don't mind. So he has been collecting those, I'd rather pass them on. I have this set here, I'm gonna actually list up for sale, uh, probably on the Iron Trap Finds page on Instagram. So if you're interested in some vintage slicks, I'll be getting those listed up. All right, so what we have here is a set of uh, Jan's Pistons that I got. I got these from Lynn Paxton, which is a very well-known um, racer, and he's also involved in the, uh, or kind of heads up, the EMMR uh, Racing Museum. Uh, that is where um, there is a ton of really neat old hot rod and racing history uh, for this area. And uh, he always brings some really neat stuff. So this is a set of, they were super cheap. I kind of well, was gonna walk away, but I'm like, they're so cheap, I might use these in a spare engine I have that needs a sleeve. So these are three and three eighths pistons that are actually made for a stroker engine. So they're made for, um, for running a mercury crank with them. So I have those, I grabbed them because I have a block that's hiding, well you can't really see it, but it's way back in there. I have a block that actually has like all the goodies done to it, but it has a hole in a cylinder and I'd like to sleeve it and uh, I'll use these pistons just because they were cheap. I think I paid like 20 bucks for them. So uh, put them in a uh, an engine I'll try to save. So that's why I got those, they were just too cheap. So here we have a little baby uh, 32, grill that I got. So I got this from um, the guys over at Iron City Garage. They're out of Pittsburgh. Um, they um, they actually picked this up at the swap meet and this goes to show. I, I buy stuff just like other people do. Uh, people complain that you know guys buy stuff at the swap and resell it. So um, they got this grill actually at the swap meet before me, set it down in their booth and I bought it and paid you know a little more to them, but they still hooked me up. I think I got a pretty good deal. So this is neat because it's like a really sectioned uh, 32 grill and it's been filled and peaked here. So it's all leaded and filled in, which is really cool. So it's a neat for a wall hanger. If I build another T, uh, obviously I have a 32 and 33, 34 grill obsession. So that's a keeper, of course. Um, over here we have a set of sharp heads. So these are very unusual. They're kind of similar to the Edelbrock uh, block letter heads, but they're sharps. Um, they're actually in pretty good shape. One head needs a little bit of repair on the uh, gasket surface, but these are so unusual, they're worth the work. I ended up getting them for pretty inexpensive. I think I paid 250 bucks for them. Um, and I kind of, my thought process was these heads, if they were, um, 
you know, for sale retail on eBay or something, they might be seven, eight hundred dollar heads. So for two fifty, even if I only use one head, if I find another one, I'm in business, or I could spend the money to uh, have that one fixed and resurfaced. So that's good. Um, I have a couple, a pair of 44 dashes I bought that were pretty cheap, um, or affordable, I should say. I didn't steal them, but they're in pretty decent shape overall. Great for hot rod dashes. I bought this one because it had uh, the ashtrays in it, and I kind of did it on a uh, on a hunch that they were the correct ones for the 33. So you can see I've already stole them out, and I'll walk you guys over here to the um, check out how good the freaking sign looks. We changed the bulbs in the garage area um, to an amber color, and I think it looks awesome. Anyways, ashtrays work. So I'll try to get you guys in here. So I threw one in there. It was the perfect, they're, they're the ashtrays. There's two different sty styles on 44s. There's like a, a normal hinge style, and then there's like a slide style, and this had the hinge style, luckily. So I stole them out of there, and I'm probably going to sell off both the dashboards. I'm on the fence. I may keep one just in case, but I'm probably going to sell both of them because I do come across them. So uh, got some parts out of that one, so that kind of made my day. Um, over here, I got I bought a bunch of 33, 34 uh, Ford stuff from a nice uh, gentleman that was local that actually um, follows the channel, which was kind of neat. And uh, I bought a bunch of this stuff from him, and I have these rear fenders left over. I have some of the stuff I actually put away because I kept some stuff, smalls and different things um, that I put away. But I'm probably going to sell these rear fenders uh, because I just, I don't think I have a need for them. So there are uh, a bunch of the parts are off a 33 Cabriolet, but I think these fenders actually could be used on 33 or 4 coupe roadster um, either way they were uh, a good price so i'm going to try and turn them over and help pay for some of the stuff that i'm keeping uh, over here now uh, i went to the lehigh valley model a club um, swap meet and show and i bought two kick-ass old porcelain signs so this is a i think a italian or french um, vidal flange sign old porcelain sign double-sided you know, really, really cool sign. Pretty good shape. I got that, which is really cool. And then I already hung this up because I couldn't wait. And then I realized I had to film. And it caused me trouble. But I got this. This is the main thing I got that I'm super excited about. So I got this old Ford porcelain sign. It's French. And it actually is advertising that they had a public telephone, that you, like a paid telephone or a public telephone. That's what that is. And I have this old, you guys may remember when we went picking in New Jersey, uh, recently, I got this uh, old wrought iron sign holder out of the service station, and it fit up perfectly. So I put that on there, and that worked out really good. Also double-sided, and that thing just looks so cool. So hung that up. I got to get time to hang up the VDOL sign. I have a sign addiction too, so good signs get kept. So that sign's going to be held on to um, for now. Hey guys, so I know at the start of 2021, we talked about doing a live. Sunday service on the last Sunday of every month. Well, we forgot that this past week was the last week of it, April. So, we missed our live Sunday service for April, so we're going to move it ahead a week. This Sunday, May 2nd, Matt is going to be going live from the shop at around 10 a.m. to give you guys a live Sunday service. So, May is extra special this year for no real reason, but there's going to be two lives this month. So, we're going to do it this Sunday. And the f last Sunday of the month, if we don't forget, hopefully we don't forget. So don't forget to tune in. Matt has some uh, some project updates to show you guys. And uh, him and I are actually heading out of the town to go pick up some stuff this weekend. And he might uh, maybe tease you guys a little bit and show what we went and picked up. Might be another car project. Might be some cool stuff. I'm not going to give it away. You guys have to tune into the live Sunday service to see for yourself. See you guys there. All right, so I have uh, over here a basically a new, uh, like Brookville, I believe, um, Deckwood for Model A. So the Deckwood on Sweetheart Roadster is totally effed. And I was going to make a new Deckwood, but I got this one for pretty inexpensive for what they cost new. And I figured it would save me a step on the car so I could move, keep moving a little forward. All I'm going to end up doing is probably just shaving this hole right here where I might put like a Lincoln door popper in it. I haven't decided yet, but um, I'm going to be basically doing something like that, either filling in or doing a custom job, but this will save me a ton of work by having that. So I grabbed that 
this is probably my favorite thing that I got. So there was a guy that was selling a bunch of old race stuff, and I skipped over a couple of things. But uh, he had a bunch of old race stuff, and um, I found this old quick change that is a old Franklin quick change. So something like 200 or so of the first Franklin quick changes back in the, I don't know if it was the 50s or so. They actually manufactured them by using a stock torque tube uh, center section and then they welded and modified on it. And it's actually done really, really well. It looks really strong. You can actually see that they used the flange end of a torque tube here. So if you look at it, that's like the star pattern. They actually used that and fit it in there and, uh, and put that in. And then over here, they welded a round flange on, which also may be from a torque tube from an earlier car. I'm not quite sure yet, but it might be. But anyways, it's got this uh, cool Franklin cover on the back. I popped the cover off at the swap meet, and this thing is heavy. Oh, God. <laughs> so I'll try and flip it around for you guys. So you guys can see here. There we go. So a really cool Franklin cover on it. Um, this thing's in fantastic condition. I don't know if it was really hardly ever ran. So I, rumor has it that these actually take 201 uh, gears, style gears. So Halliburton 201 gears. So I'm gonna try and actually use this in my 33. I think it would be really cool under that car. So uh, I was really happy to find that and I got a pretty darn good deal on it. Um, from the same guy, I got this old Vacturi carburetor. I have two more of these. I scored a Hershey that are really cool that I want to use on something someday. But they're just a really neat carburetor. They have all the like adjustments right here on the top and you can actually hook rods to uh, do like turn knees and different things for high speed idle and stuff like that. So definitely like a racing carburetor. I hear that they were used on midgets and, and different race cars back in the day and also like uh, hydroplane boats and stuff but they're really cool. They have a simple two, two bolt design. So I have two, now I have three of them. I figured for parts, I'm gonna probably need a couple, two, three, four of them. So I've been grabbing them up for someday. It might be really cool to put them on a banger or something like that, because they're so unusual looking. Got this little plate. It's for my hometown here where I live. This is a Centennial plate just from 66. Just something neat to have, it was cheap, and I'll throw it on the wall or on the workbench. Let's see. And then I also got, Last few things that I kept here. These are 16 inch moon style, but they're Namsco uh, hubcaps. So 16 inch is very unusual. And usually a lot of them you see are 15 inch and you have to drill holes around the edges into the wheel to hold them on. But these actually have nice little clips on them that they will fit into 16 inch wheels. So these are super cool. Never seen a set or had a chance. So I bought those with those uh, white slicks. So. Um, I'm gonna end up selling those. I sold those slicks and the extra money I made on that. Pretty much paid for these, so I got a free set of hubcaps for my collection. So I'm gonna find the right car to use these on, or maybe if I wanna change like the identity of the Schroll car or something, we could put some uh, some flat moon discs on it and we'll change the look of the car, which will be cool. Um, last thing here is a set of chrome rear garnish molding for, and window frames for a uh, 49 to 51 Mercury. So, found these in a swap meet. They're all chrome. I cleaned them up already. They shine pretty nice. So they would be really cool for a, you know, a mild custom or something like that. So I grabbed them and I'm gonna probably pass them along. So that is kind of like my big pile of stuff. So uh, Carlisle was definitely a success. We got, uh, we had a ton of fun. Thank you to everybody that stopped out to the swap meet and uh, said hello, uh, stopped to have a conversation or whatever. I really enjoyed all the great conversations we had and uh, with everybody and I found some great stuff. So um, another good swap meet in the books and uh, can't wait for the next uh, big one. Uh, so Fall Carlisle is gonna be really good. If Hershey happens, it's gonna be amazing. And uh, hopefully I can catch you guys at a future swap meet. So let me know what you guys think is your favorite thing that I got at the swap meet this year uh, at the Spring Carlisle. I'd like to hear what you guys think as well down below in the comments. Thanks guys. Catch you later.